today. He's trying to refute the New York Times investigative report. What a report on this. Look at it there on the source of Trump's wealth. The story, which took up a staggering eight pages in today's newspaper, took over a year of research to get it done. Trump today attacked the report, of course, and the Times on Twitter, calling it a hit piece. But according to the Times, the reporting makes clear that in every era of Mr. Trump's life, his finances were deeply intertwined with and dependent on dad's money. By their account, Trump received the equivalent of up to $413 million from his father's real estate empire. That's $400 million over his lifetime. Trump's long reliance on his family's fortune raises new questions about the image he has cultivated of himself, that of a successful real estate developer who made billions from a loan of only a million dollars. Here he goes. I borrowed very little money from my father. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. My father uh, gave me a very small loan in 1975. I built a company that's worth more than 10 billion dollars, okay? With a million dollar loan. And for that million dollar loan, the Times reports uh, Fred Trump actually lent him at least 60 million dollars or 140 million dollars in today's dollars. Well, the lead editor on today's Times puts it more bluntly, calling Trump's origin story a sham, saying it's a version of reality so elaborately embellished that it qualifies as fan fiction more than biography. Yet we've seen that Trump goes to great lengths to maintain the illusion of self-made billionaire. Here's what Trump said about those who questioned the value of his assets in 1995. The only critics that would say that are losers uh, and, and people that know better or they don't know at all or they're jealous or they have problems. And here's how Trump reacted in 2016 when Marco Rubio challenged him on the source of his money. This is what we're going to have. Here's the guy president. that inherited $200 million. If he hadn't inherited $200 million, you know where Donald no, no, Trump no, would no, be no. right now? No, no, selling no. watches in Manhattan. I wrong. I'm wrong. I took That's that he is so get. wrong. We'll work on that. I took $1 million and I turned it into oh, okay. $10 billion. I borrowed one then million dollars. Then release the tax return so we can see how I much money he makes. I borrowed $1 million. Well, I turned it into $10 billion, more than Thank $10 you. billion. This is like Groundhog's Day. Here you have Marco Rubio got blown away in that race saying, I just want to see his tax returns. We still haven't seen them. Joining me right now is David Korn, Washington Bureau Chief of Mother Jones, and Gwenda Blair is author of Trump's Three Generations of Builders in a Present. Glenda, you start. And uh, what do you make of this story that just blew away the front page of the Times today? The amount of detail, the amount of documentation, of paperwork, of financial records, astounding. And it points out that the president really didn't do what he claimed he did, which is make himself into a tycoon. He didn't do it. No, he didn't. It's uh, the scale of it was stunning. The, the model, the M.O., the way of doing it, not so much. His father perfected that idea of figuring out the way around every rule, every law, every regulation, and figuring out how to find the tiny little corner that you could, he could squeak around. He did that in his own career, and that he then would turn to making his son, to doing that for his son and the rest of his children, not a surprise. You know, we hear the term, uh, born on third base and claim you had a homer, but this guy looks like he was born sliding into home. I mean... I mean, how do you not make it when daddy gives you 400 big ones, 400 million? It's not that long away a to silver, a billion. Yeah, well, a silver spoon, no. It was like a platinum spoon encrusted with diamonds. Yeah. Amazing, just amazing. Why do you think, last question on this round, why do you think he, he had to create, if you're really rich and you got all this money and you're swagging around New York City and you're a big shot, why do you have to brag that you did it all yourself? I think there's, well, a couple of reasons, a psychologist field day, obviously. One of them is uh, usually super rich billionaires are not exactly the kind of middle American Joe six pack target he was looking for. They don't, they're not necessarily looking friendly towards that plutocrat. So he had to put himself on the side of that target voter. That, uh, you know, that person yeah. who wasn't doing that well. But I'm talking about way well. before. So he had to uh, do Gwenda, that. Way before he was doing this, well before he ran for office, he was out there selling himself in the comic books, basically, as a comic book, comic strip hero, yeah. downtown developer with a big trench coat on. I made this city. He seemed to want that early. Let me go to David on this, the politics yeah. of this thing. He had yeah. this, pre this, this uh, premise a long time ago. I did it myself. 
Yeah, I, I think it, you need a psychologist to get to that. There are two really profound elements to this story of which I am highly jealous. The work is just phenomenal, and I tip my hat to everyone at the New York Times involved in this. But one element you went through, the self-made man myth, utterly destroyed by this. He got over $400 million from his dad's empire and $60 million in loan, many of which he did, much of which he didn't pay back. The other part of the story, which is, is maybe even more troubling, is that his family, including Donald Trump, used what seemed to be criminal methods to get, you know, get money into their own pockets. Tell me about the there. fraud. Well, this is what well, they set up one company <clears throat> that would buy boilers, I don't know, say for $5,000. And this was a company that was owned by the children, not Fred Trump. Uh, but his company would pay, you know, we'd get $5,000 boilers. But this company, which bought the boilers for Trump, would then charge Fred Trump's company, say, $10,000. This is just typical padding. It's what the mob does, what every crook does, and that way you get $5,000 into the company, and it's in there clean. It's not a gift. It gets around the tax uh, uh, laws for, for gifts, and they did this over the years, and they, millions of dollars float in through this illegal mechanism that Trump was a party to. So not just that he's like, he got money from his dad and he hid that. He used illegal uh -huh. and what the Times calls fraudulent means Why did the IRS to do this. go along with all this? Well, the, it's very interesting because the IRS did look at certain elements of this along the way, and they would find that, like, one instance, Trump the family valued their... Um, a property at say like five million that was really worth eighty million, and the IRS would come and go. Well, we think it's you know you got to add two million to that. Well, how, so they were so outrageous, the IRS could not keep up with this fraud. Well, how do we believe anything he says about macroeconomic dollars in terms of the federal government? What the federal government's spending and bringing anyway? Trump has long maintained that he won't release any of his tax returns because he says they're under audit. Here he goes. Watch this song. I will absolutely give my return, but I'm being audited now for two or three years, so I can't do it until the audit is finished, obviously. It's under audit. I'll release them when the audit's completed. My tax returns are very simple. They're under a minor audit, routine audit, as they have been for many years. Every year I get audited. At the appropriate time, I will release them. But right now I'm under routine audit. Nobody cares. You know, the only one that cares about my tax returns are the reporters. Okay. You don't think the American no, public is concerned about No, I don't think so. I, I won. I mean, I became president. No, I don't think they care at all. Here's what Sarah Saunders said today when asked about that audit. Is President's uh, taxes still under audit? Uh, I know that a number of his taxes are still under or audit. From the 90s and early 2000s? I, don't I can get back to you. Still, yeah. Do you provide any of his tax returns? Uh, I'm not aware of any plans to do so. So she'll get back to us, Gwenda. I don't think so. I'm, I'm not sure we're ever going to hear about these tax returns. I don't think so. Uh, I... The only thing that surprised me about his run, and really, after writing about him for so long, that he actually went up and did it, was that I, I knew he wouldn't ever release his tax returns, so I thought he wouldn't run for president. I didn't realize that he would be able to deflect attention from that, and that the public, enough of the public, would somehow not find that a you know, deal breaker. And they didn't. You know, that's very well said, because I do remember all these years we said a lot of us in the journalism world said he never going to take his clothes off financially. He's never going to let us look at what's going on behind the scene. He's the man behind the, uh, the curtain. Yeah. and He's never going to step out from behind that. You're right. He found a way of finessed it. He never told us anything. Still got elected in Electoral College. Thank you, David Corn. Thank you, Gwenda Blair. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.